So the energy diagrams for exothermic and endothermic reactions. If you want to make for endothermic and exothermic, in endothermic reactants have less energy. The product will have high energy. Where in exothermic opposite Reactant have high energy. And the product is having low energy. In endothermic reactions, energy absorbed is more. Then released. And in exothermic reaction, energy release is more than absorbed. So if we sketch energy diagram for this, one is for endothermic, another one is for exothermic. So first thing, endothermic reactant have low energy, product is having high energy. So this, this is reactant and product. For exothermic opposite, reactants have high energy, the product is having low energy. So here we have reactant. And on y-axis, we have product. Here we have reactant. On y-axis, we have product. Then what happened? Energy absorbed is more than energy release. So first, the reactant will absorb energy so as the reactant will absorb energy, they reach a certain energy where the reaction start. What we call this energy where the reaction start? The point where the reaction start, what we call that point? This is a point where the reaction starts. So the point or energy at which the reaction start, we call that as activation energy. And once the activation energy is reached, they will form the product. So if the question is label the activation energy, so how you label the activation energy? It's from reactant till the start of the reaction. That's called activation energy. And activation energy is always positive because its energy is absorbed. So this arrow, which shows an activation energy, minimum possible energy for reaction to start. A minimum possible energy, which the particles require to start up the reaction. We call that as activation energy and the difference between energy of reactant and product that is known as energy change so and from reactant to product this part is known as energy change Same way, 
for exothermic reactions, they, they reach activation energy, minimum possible energy for reaction to start, but they need a small amount of activation energy or a small amount of energy to start up the reaction. The minimum possible energy at which the reaction start And once the reaction start, they will form a product. Product will release energy. So if the question is label and activation energy, so from reactant till the start of the reaction, we call that as activation energy. And if the question is label energy change, so energy from reactant to the product is refers to energy change. The activation energy is positive for both reactions. The activation energy for endothermic reaction, it is positive for exothermic reaction. It is also positive. Why? Because energy is absorbed. You can see Reactant absorb energy for, to start up the reaction. Here also reactant absorb energy to start up the reaction. So energy change is positive. Sorry, activation energy is positive for both endothermic and exothermic reaction. But what about energy change? Energy change is a difference in energy reactant minus product. So here reactant minus product, is product minus reactant, the difference in energy. So when product minus reactant, I will do product is having high energy, reactant is having low energy. So energy change will be positive for endothermic. But energy change, when a product minus reactant, I will do it, I will get a negative answer. So energy change is always negative for exothermic reactions. Is it clear? The activation energy for any kind of reaction, it is always positive by because energy is absorbed and energy absorbed is positive. If energy release, then it will be negative. So energy change for endothermic reaction because greater amount of energy is absorbed and released. That's why energy change for endothermic reaction is always positive and energy change for exothermic reaction is always negative. Any doubt in this? These are the energy diagrams for exothermic and endothermic reactions. Any doubt? Feel free to ask doubt or questions because when you are asking a question, you will have a better understanding of the topic. Take the screenshot. Why the reaction start is different? Because in endothermic reactions, the particles are need greater amount of energy. They are, the particles are more stable in a normally in endothermic reaction. That's why they need a greater amount of energy. Example. For exothermic reactions, if you are burning a fuel or a fossil fuel, so what you have to do, you have to provide some energy and how you provide that energy, the spark is actually providing energy and that so that the particle reach an activation energy. Once they reach an activation energy, as a result, they will form a product. Then the fuel, basically how we define a fuel, something is a fuel or defined refers to the fuel. When a substance can be used,
as a source of energy if a substance can be used as a source of energy what we call that substance we call that substance as a fuel and we have different types of fuels we have fossil fuel hydrogen fuel nuclear fuel the fuel which is obtained from remain or organic matter that's called a fossil fuel if we use hydrogen we call that as if we burn hydrogen because hydrogen is also a flammable gas it can catch fire so we call hydrogen fuel and the third one a nuclear reaction release energy so we have a nuclear fuel such as uranium yes biofuel is also refers to the fossil fuel biodiesel is there fossil fuel the fuels which you are obtaining from organic matter you refer that as a fossil fuel so example like coal oil and gas so these coal oil and gas are refers to the fossil fuel so how the fossil fuel release energy or produce energy so what we will do we have a fossil fuel we burn this fossil fuel so to burn for combustion what we need we need oxygen so fossil fuel plus oxygen it it will give a product like such as carbon dioxide carbon monoxide or carbon monoxide if it is in complete combustion if it contain hydrogen or hydrocarbon so it will give water vapors plus it will release the heat energy so in short we can say there will be a product specific product will be there plus the heat energy so if you are burning a coal coal react with oxygen give carbon dioxide and release heat energy if you burn a natural gas or a methane it will give carbon dioxide and water vapors now what is the advantage of using these fuels what are the advantages of using fossil fuel what could be the advantages of fossil fuel provide lot of energy that's correct what else generally fossil fuels are cheaper what is the disadvantage of using fossil fuel what could yes it's limited it's a non renewable so limited what else so release uh, toxic gases such as carbon dioxide and carbon monoxide or produce global warming so release toxic gases you can so there are some advantages and disadvantages of fossil fuel then hydrogen fuel where we use hydrogen fuel is a non renewable so that's correct where we use this hydrogen fuel we use this it is used hydrogen is used as a fuel in a fuel cell 
what happened basically in a fuel cell so fuel cell it's a chamber in which a reaction occur so fuel cell is having opening for hydrogen and oxygen one side hydrogen enter another side oxygen enter and when hydrogen mix with oxygen as a result what they will produce they will produce water so reaction between oxygen and hydrogen result in a formation of the water where we use these fuel cells normally these fuel cells uh, are used in these space stations spacecraft or space missions to produce because hydrogen can burn or it's highly flammable so it can burn easily and release the energy so the overall reaction in a fuel cell it will be hydrogen plus oxygen gives water plus heat energy what do you think advantages of the fuel cell what are the advantages of this fuel cell what might uh, could be the advantages of the fuel cell it yeah, does not produce toxins or does not pollute the environment what else no it's fuel is not cheap uh, fee because uh, we have to supply we have to extract the hydrogen so its fuel is not cheap it's reliable that's good reliability that's correct yes uh, it does not have a moving part so does not produce noise pollution so few you have to write uh, number 1 you can mention it is efficient release provide lot of energy or does not produce toxins and it is efficient process what could be the disadvantages of fuel cell of burning hydrogen highly flammable so and one thing because hydrogen is lighter than air so it is difficult to store hydrogen at room temperature and pressure expensive to prepare or manufacture or extract so expensive and difficult to store
So it's difficult to store hydrogen. A small amount of heat for amount of effort. Yeah, that's the third one. Is because uh, we don't have the substances which can withstand with very high pressure. So it's practically for small scale, it is can be done for a large scale. It is difficult to have hydrogen fuel cell. The third one is a nuclear fuel. We use uranium. And how it releases energy, a heavy particle split into lighter particles by the help of neutron. So by the help of neutron, we break the heavy particle Heavy uranium split into lighter particle by the help of neutron. So what happened? And release energy. So if you have, say, this is uranium. So we target this uranium by neutron. Uranium is 92 and 235, the isotope of uranium. So what it caused, it caused breaking of the uranium into lighter particles. So uranium will dissociate into lighter particles. As it dissociate into lighter particle, it's also release energy. So reaction release energy, it's an exothermic reaction. And what we call this reaction, we call that as a nuclear fission reaction. The term nuclear fission means when the heavy nucleus decompose or break down by the help of a neutron into lighter nuclei, we call that as nuclear fission reaction. So by the help of nuclear fission, we break this uranium and split into lighter, which result in a formation of a release of heat energy. What are the advantages of nuclear fuel? What are the advantages of using nuclear fuel? It does not contribute to global warming. It releases energy. So there's no pollution. So that's a disadvantage. Yeah, zero carbon emission is there and the disadvantage it releases harmful radiation what is the similarity between all these three reactions fossil fuel hydrogen fuel and uranium as a fuel or a nuclear fuel. What is the similarity between all these three changes? So all, they all are producing energies of similarity, all are exothermic. Then there is another term which we define, we call that as oxidation. Oxidation means addition of oxygen. So you can see a fossil fuel plus oxygen 
so this is oxidation reaction as well the term oxidation means addition of oxygen so oxygen is added to release the energy here hydrogen react with oxygen so it's a or addition of oxygen that's why this is also oxidation but in a nuclear fuel this is not oxidation why this is not oxidation because there is no oxygen added so if oxygen is added to a substance we call it oxidation if no oxygen is added we don't say oxidation is it clear when the heavy nucleus is split into lighter by the help of a neutron we target the heavy nucleus by neutron so that this neutron help in decomposition or breaking of this heavy nucleus into lighter particles lighter atoms or nuclei and this result in a release of energy we call that as nuclear fission reaction so in question 2 the diagram shows some properties of a substance may have to which label part of a diagram uranium belongs to radioactive means it is releasing energy take the screenshot first take the screenshot then we'll discuss some questions what could be the answer the diagram shows this is a paints diagram in mathematics you study the common set which part uranium belongs to everyone should participate 14 students so i need 14 answers everyone should participate in this so we have to check the common property uranium is not a compound it's an element so it cannot be a it cannot be c or it cannot be b so what it's it's used as energy source and it is radioactive so what could be the answer d is the correct answer Question nine. Which statement about the fuel is correct? Question nine.
So hydrogen is, although it's difficult to store, heat energy can only be produced by burning fossil fuel. Now there are other ways. Methane is a good fuel because it produces only water. Now it also produces carbon dioxide. Uranium is burned. It does not burn in air. B is the correct answer. Okay, in this reaction, question 20. First, identify which reaction is this, endothermic or exo? Question 20, which reaction is this? Reactant have high energy and the product is having low energy. Yeah, this is exothermic reaction. When reactant have high energy, product is having low energy, the reaction is exo. Now, as we discussed, activation energy is always positive. That can never be negative. We keep in mind, activation energy for any kind of reaction, it is always positive. But what about energy change, delta H? Delta H means energy change. It will be positive or negative? Energy change is the energy of product minus reactant, so it will always be negative for exo and positive for endo. So what could be the right answer for question 20? So energy change is negative, reaction is exothermic, and activation energy is positive. A similar question, but a different diagram. This is for endothermic reaction. What could be the answer? What could be the answer here? Activation energy, because it's energy which is absorbed. So activation energy can never be negative. It is always positive. So either B can be answered or D can be answered. But the thing is, because this diagram is for endothermic, this cannot be exothermic. So D cannot be an answer. So what you're left with, you're left with only B. So practically activation energy can never be negative it's always positive so c and a and c can never be the answer because in which uh, in this a and c activation energy is given negative so first you cancel out the two completely wrong answers and then find between the two you will find which one is correct Question 23, which statement describe an exothermic reaction? Question I need participation from everyone so that I can have a knowledge that everyone is understanding or no difficulty in the topic. Even if you are answering wrong, that's not an issue, but you should participate and mention the answer which you think is correct. The energy absorbed 
for bond breaking is less than the energy released when the bonds are formed. That's correct. Bond, bond breaking energy is less and bond forming energy is more. Okay, in this question, sulfur tetrafluoride SF4 can be made by combining gaseous sulfur with fluorine. Equation is given, sulfur plus fluorine gives sulfur tetrafluoride. The reaction is exothermic. Complete energy diagram include arrow, which already, uh, which clearly shown the energy change during a process. So it's an exothermic reaction. If it's an exothermic reaction, Reactant have high energy and the product will have low energy. So what we will do? The product is SF4, so we'll draw SF4. Now it's optional because in the question they did not mention draw activation energy. So if you draw, that's also okay. You can mention activation energy and then energy change. You have to label the energy change. So energy change is from reactant to the product is energy change, arrow should point down and activation energy arrow will point up. But because in the question activation energy is not having marks, so you can also draw another diagram without activation energy, without showing an activation energy, just show an arrow. Which gives an activation. So this is because in the question, active, they did not ask to draw an arrow or show the activation energy. So it's not having marks. That's why you can just label this as energy change or you can write as delta H. Both ways are correct. You can mention activation energy. That's also right. If without activation energy, that's also correct. Because in the question, they did not ask to draw Yes, Afi, when there is a time, then activation energy is important. When on x-axis time is there, then activation energy should be there. Complete the diagram by adding a product and label the delta H. This reaction is also exothermic. And if this reaction is exothermic, cyclopropane plus bromine give dibromopropane. So here we have dibromopropane. And we'll label the arrow for active, the energy change from reactant to product. Any doubt related to today's class? Uh, we'll do more examples related to this energy change. So I'll end the session and share the recording with you.